All right, so I got the cord plugged in in the back. Let's go ahead and hit the power switch. And we can see the screen lights up and the knob also lights up. Very nice graphics. And we played some music there. First thing that pulls up here is out of the box wizard. So it's asking us a question. Is the metal print surface in place? Talking about this thing here, it is. So we're gonna click on yes. Is it a touch screen? Oh, it is, okay, great. So you have a knob and it's touch. So the nozzle and the bed are moving right now. It looks like it's gonna be coming down. Let's go back to the screen. So it is setting the Z axis coupler. So I guess whatever technique that is, that's what it's doing. So it's going back up again. Let's go up and see what it does. Okay, so it hits against the end here and that's how it calibrates itself to be level. That makes sense as if you don't have a belt tethered, you do need to calibrate yourself somehow. So now it's testing the fan. It's asking if the nearest fans to you are spinning. I'm guessing these, yes they are, they're both spinning. So we're gonna click on yes. Now it's asking if the hot end fan is cycling on and off, and it is. I can hear it turning on and off, and that's gonna be this one here. So we'll click yes to that. So now it's doing a X and Y motor check. Pretty cool little graphics there. Very cyberpunky looking. All right, so it's just going back and forth. Okay, so it did the X, now it's doing the Y. All right, so it looks like it's done with that. I'm gonna click continue. And now it's doing bed leveling. So it's gonna take measurements. So here it tells us the difference. So we got 0.2 decreasing accuracy, 0.13. Okay, so as it's taking it, it's calibrating it, so it'll be much more accurate. I'm guessing it's going between the two motors is what it's doing. So if the bed is higher there and lower there, it's going to calibrate the motor to go a little lower on that side. Yeah, it's definitely got a advanced bed leveling calibration here. All right, so now it's doing the usual point checks. It looks like that was six or seven, I guess. So maybe it's a seven by seven or something like that. So yeah, quite a few points. All right, so here it says that our bed has successfully leveled and the measurements have been saved. So yeah, so far, really easy process. We'll click continue. All right, so now it's asking us to put some filament in. Let's go ahead and open up this box with the PLA black that we got. Very well vacuum sealed. So much so that it kind of bit the spool because it's cardboard. So this is just regular PLA and hopefully we'll still be able to put it on our spool holder as the type we have here is the kind where it rolls on it. So we'll grab the snippers and we'll cut the filament on an angle. And then we're gonna set it here on the spool holder and this is how it's gonna roll. And actually there are some ridges here. That's actually quite unique because it stays in the ridge. So yeah, we're literally gonna insert our filament into this hole on the top. And there's an arrow pointing to it, so where it kind of goes into the gears. And actually it's spinning right now, and it did grab it. Going through, down, we should be coming out out of the hot end eventually here. And we did have a different color in there, looks like pink. And now the black is coming out that we just inserted. So the question is, if the filament that we inserted is coming out, the enter would be yes. So now it's telling us to carefully remove this extra purge that we had and insert the SD card, which is this guy here. Again, I love that it's full size and also they give you a really good storage of 16 GB. So the SD card does plug right here. There we go. Now it's asking us if we wanna start printing out of the SD card and we'll go ahead and okay that. It says here it'll take approximately 15 minutes to complete. Okay, check out our menu there guys. Looks quite unique. So the printer's getting ready to print. I do hear some fans speeding up underneath the printer. Probably the power supply. But overall, it's actually quite quiet. Or at least not obnoxiously loud or annoying. The fans are more of a humming sound. All right, so it perched there in the front and now it's printing. 
let's look at our screen here a little closer so you guys can see the fonts are quite interesting so it's a black background with yellow print and we got quite a bit of information like the nozzle temperature the bed temperature and the target the height of where it's at 0.95 millimeters the percentage it's done the fan speeds at 33 right now and the flow is 100 speed is 250 and that's alternating there so and then we got a pause z height adjustment so this is our baby step on the fly more and stop so if we click on this we can adjust it up and down it is set right now to minus one so the font is a little hard to understand or at least the icons the pictures of what they are but once you see what they are it's self-explanatory so you got save the amount you want to go up and down reset back up and down so let's go back and then under more we can adjust our heat and here between the nozzle or the bed so pretty straightforward and quite easy to understand and then the amount here and then the fan and the percentages which is the speed or the flow but yeah so you guys can see here maybe there is the fan shroud right at the front but right underneath you can kind of see the print so it's not the perfect viewing angle at least from the front but from the sides you can see probably a little better and especially from the back you can see extremely well so it looks like we are printing and it's stuck and everything looks good so i guess we'll let this print print out and we'll see what it looks like and it does appear to be printing the same kind of print as this that came with the printer so we'll see how they both compare but as far as the noise levels guys it's not completely silent but it is on the quieter side and the fans are more pleasant on the noise they make and they're spinning so yeah overall i would say moderately quiet but not silent. Alright, so our first print is done and it turned out really good. So on the display here it says to refer to the manual of how to evaluate this print that we just did, which has a very high tolerance of 0.1 millimeters, which you will need a set of calipers and I do have these but the digital part of it is not working as the battery has died, but we can still evaluate it. Let's go ahead and pull it off the bill plate, see how easy it comes off. Okay, so it's stuck on there very well, even though the plate is completely cold but it does come off pretty easy and you guys can see how the bottom is it's pretty much perfect I would say we might need to go down a bit but I don't think I'd want it because it's already sticking so well so here we can see the x-axis and overall it looks great a little bit of ghosting but overall very very nice and then we got the y also very good and this is the X again you can kind of see the ghosting here on the back side and this is on the back of it and then the other Y side so yeah, overall pretty good and very minimal vibration, just a tiny bit of ghosting. And the top also looks great and this is where our bearing will go, which is included. And it should fit in there perfectly. And it does. I'm just gonna push it all the way down. Literally perfection, as you guys can see. So yeah, let's go ahead and give it a quick measure here. On the X axis, we have exactly 30, which is what it's supposed to be at 30 by 30 cube. And millimeters then the y axis is also perfect exactly the same as the x and then the z is a hair taller than the x and y so i'd say it's more like 30.1 or something maybe 0.2 i guess it could go down a bit on the bed but yeah this is pretty much perfect tolerances and what you would expect from a 3d printer like this just to quickly compare there this is the cube that was included and they look practically identical which they should be because this is printed from the same printer it's just we printed the black one and this one was included so pretty cool
All right, so we printed out both of our sliced prints and I have to say they turned out very well. So we were kind of printing at a slower speed, but I used to print at this speed everything. So in the new world of fast printing, everybody wants to print faster and faster. But I do have to say these are very reasonable times, especially for the Benchy here. It's one hour and 20 minutes, which is not too bad considering how well it turned out. Now we can speed things up as we do have linear rails and that will improve quite a bit. But to get optimal print quality, if you print at the recommended speed, which is slower and you have the time to do it it's definitely worth it so let's look at this cube first so here we have the x-axis and you guys can see how beautifully the layers went down so the little dots you see in between is actually a randomized z layer height or the jump so this can be fixed where it's only in one corner and it's not as noticeable so we probably need to change that in the slicer but yeah beautiful print for the x Pretty much perfect, very minimal ringing and almost no ghosting. We got the Y here also, very minor ringing and practically no ghosting. We got the X wall and the Y wall. A little more vibrations, but pretty much perfect. The bottom, excellent. And the top looks great. So yeah, an excellent print here for the calibration cube. So the Benchy is still stuck on. Let's see how easy it pops off. Not bad. So the build tech definitely sticks well and pops right off, at least here for PLA. So the Benchy is definitely nice, guys. Well, let's start with the bottom. So you guys can see that we were kind of too far off the build plate. Not super far, but it could go down a bit. So I guess we could lower that. But yeah, if we look at the sides here, guys, absolutely perfection. Beautiful sides all around. So yeah, on black here we can see every little detail and it's practically perfect all around. There's no weird ghosting or even the very minimal vibrations. We can see here around the arches, also great cooling. We can see it there in that window, very minimal Y vibrations. So yeah, I would say this is perfection right here. And considering this took an hour and 20 minutes, this is a very, very nice showcase kind of benchy. Honestly, I wasn't expecting anything less as this is quite a high-end printer that definitely should produce quality prints as one of its main priorities, which it obviously does as you guys see.